Payday 3 is plagued by a myriad of issues, but perhaps the most pressing one is the progression system. One of the biggest complaints from the players is that leveling up is tied directly to this challenge system. These challenges try to force the player's hand into doing things they may not actually like, and in turn, the game feels like completing a long and boring checklist just to level up. It's both incredibly grindy and it disrespects the player's time. The latest Payday 3 update tries to remedy this issue by changing up their leveling system. Today, I'm going to break down these changes and answer the question, is the progression system better now? Is Payday 3 worth playing in its current state? Let's get started. In this new leveling system, there are now three additional ways to gain EXP, or infamy points. One is for completing a heist, another is for completing a heist in stealth, and the last is completing a heist while securing all the loot. I did a bit of testing on what influences these EXP bonuses and found a few things. First off, each bonus here is dependent on both the heist you play and the difficulty that you played it on. For example, doing a dirty ice on normal rewarded only 15 EXP, while doing a road rage on normal gave 35 EXP. For an example where you can see the difference in EXP for each bonus, Here's one done on No Rest for the Wicked, on Overkill difficulty, in Stealth, where I gain 110 EXP for completion, 30 EXP for completing it in Stealth, and 40 EXP for getting all the bags. Meanwhile, I did a Golden Shark on Overkill difficulty and in Stealth, and I gained 110 EXP for completion, 35 EXP for doing in Stealth, and 65 EXP for getting all the bags. So each heist is going to give something a little different for each value, and the differing factors are also not calculated totally linearly. For example, completing Dirty Ice on Normal only gave 15 EXP. Completing Dirty Ice on Hard gave 20 EXP. Completing Dirty Ice on Very Hard gave 25 EXP. And completing Dirty Ice on Overkill gave 35 EXP. So that's a snippet of the type of values that you can get. As far as actually getting the bonuses, for completion, you'll get that bonus anytime you complete a heist, no matter what, very simple. Same with the stealth bonus. If you complete a heist in stealth, you get the bonus. For all bags EXP, unfortunately, this also follows that trend. It's only if you get all lootable bags on that heist that you can get the EXP. If you miss out on even one loot bag, you miss out entirely on all that bonus EXP. In summary, these are the only major changes to the leveling system. In the patch notes, there's also something talking about adding level cap rewards for whatever poor deranged soul is out there that is max level in Payday 3. You can now get cosmetic rewards for each level you get past the level cap, which is 150, I believe. The cosmetics are random, or so it said, but, you know, I can't really verify that. In any case, this applies to nearly no one, so I'm not really bothered to figure out. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot. When you first boot up the game, you're welcomed by this new recommended challenges screen. Now you may be thinking, wow, we finally got some quality of life for challenges? Uh, not really. That's actually it. No, we did not get a way to search for challenges. No, we didn't get better filters for filtering challenges, such as maybe separating combat, interactable, lootable, or even the special challenges that can all show up within the same category. We didn't get a way to choose our own challenges to track. We also can't see this recommended challenges screen anywhere other than the main menu. That means it's not in-game in the tap screen, it's not in the escape screen, and there's no pop-up when we complete a challenge. Nothing. But funny enough, you know a game that has challenges show up while you're in-game? Pay to the heist. So that's it, the new leveling system. Objectively speaking, outside of that really sad and underwhelming recommended challenges screen, this leveling system is a positive change. It's good that we're finally getting highest completion EXP, and I also think that the stealth bonus was a good addition. It's basically like the stealth increase modifier from Payday 2, but just given to you straight away. 
So the highest completion, stealth, and all bags EXP, they're not a whole lot, and it's usually worth roughly a low or mid-tier challenge, depending on which heist you do and on what difficulty. Because of that, this update does make it clear that the focus of leveling up is still on the challenges themselves. With that in consideration, there are some aspects of this where the new leveling system falls a bit short. Take for instance the stealth bonus EXP. As nice as it is, the real underlying problem is that the challenge system itself still heavily favors playing loud by completing loud challenges, such as using throwables, getting kills with weapons, and so on. In Payday 2, you can argue that a lot of missions that had a loud and stealth were much easier and quicker to do in stealth, but in Payday 3, at least for me, it feels like that gap is much closer than before, especially if you play alone. Plus, you also have to take into account that loud is still likely the preferred way that most players like to play. In a loud mission, it's a lot easier to work on multiple challenges at the same time, and the quantity of them is also much higher. There's just a big disparity here that I don't think that the stealth EXP bonus can quite gap. Now, moving on, regarding the highest completion EXP, this is probably the best edition. I'm glad it seems like you get more than I expected, but at the same time, it can feel oddly small. So if you're doing one of the harder heists and you're doing it on a high difficulty, like the golden shark I showed earlier, yeah, you know, it's a pretty good amount. That's 110 EXP. But this is still considering that it takes maybe a good 20 or even 30 minutes to finish that heist. That's also not factoring in maybe playing it solo, taking the extra time to get extra bags, maybe possible failures and whatnot. I guess what I'm saying is that this can feel a little inconsistent at times. Like for Cook-Off, I did an overkill one and it gave me 40 EXP. And while I do concede it is a shorter heist, I still feel like it's plenty difficult at that difficulty, especially playing solo, and that makes a big difference. Or even take No Rest for the Wicked versus Golden Shark. For some reason, both of these gave the same heist completion EXP on Overkill difficulty, but they definitely don't feel like the heists share the same scale, both in length and difficulty. I mean, I do understand that this is probably one of the hardest things to get balanced and get right. I mean, just take a look at Payday 2. So, you know, I kind of give the devs a pass for this one. In any case, this part of the leveling system was handled better than I expected it to be, so I'm glad to have been wrong about the devs making the value too small. I still would have preferred if the values given for doing, say, the hardest difficulties were higher. But again, because it's all still based around the challenge system, I guess it is what it is. Unfortunately, I can't say I share that same feeling about the All Bags EXP. I think making the All Bags EXP be a binary, you either get it or you don't, that was one of the worst decisions of this update. The bonus should have been based on the amount of loot bags you secure. The more you get, the more EXP you gain. Or maybe even a tiered system. Steal 25% more than minimum, you get 5 points. Steal 50% more, you get 10 points, etc. The issue with forcing players to get all of the bags is that the difficulty increase in this endeavor is not properly reflected in the EXP. The way Payday 3 works is that heists get more difficult the further you progress. When you complete more objectives, you get into further waves, that wave might spawn cloakers, then the next bulldozers, and then finally maybe some heavy swat. That, combined with the fact that bag moving in itself is probably one of the hardest objectives to do in the game, that means that painstakingly going for all the bags is not an easy task. And in fact, it doesn't really seem worth going for when it only amounts to the equivalent of one low or mid-tier challenge worth of EXP. This is especially bad with the return of Cook-Off, where getting three meth bags is the same as getting, say, 15. If you don't get max bags, you don't get extra EXP. Now taking a step back, one of the things that could be argued is that getting all the bags is more about the challenge, not what you get out of it. Or maybe that the money that you get is the reward. Okay, sure, but if that's the case, then I'd be hard pressed to see most casual players actively going for it. 
If the rewards aren't that incentivizing, then people will take the path of least resistance. I mean, this is exactly why everyone sits in bathrooms and farms kills. I think that same sentiment also toes the line in regards to the difficulty. It's nice to see that you can get a pretty decent completion EXP for doing overkill. But overkill is not easy, especially if you like playing loud. And I would still say that the EXP isn't quite enough to reflect that difficulty spike. Still, again, objectively speaking, if the challenge system is to remain at the forefront of the focus of leveling, then this is still a positive addition to the game. It grants more incentives to actually complete missions and occasionally do things like get all the bags or do stealth. I think the issue with these leveling changes, though, is that it feels more like a compromise rather than an active pursuit to rebalance the challenge system. And because of that, it still has all the problems that the challenge system originally created, such as rewarding bathroom camping and kill farming for weapon EXP, rather than actually playing the game and emphasizing variety like the challenges we're trying to do. The only time where I feel like this new system is actually kind of competitive is when you get every bonus and at max value. Complete a highest and overkill difficulty, do it in stealth, and get all the bags. But getting all those bonuses kind of requires already having a lot of knowledge and investment in the game. And realistically, only a handful of players can consistently do that. Plus, it's still going to require a lot of time invested, and it also insinuates you're doing stealth. Both of which where doing so loses out on progressing the meat of all those other challenges that are the real big EXP givers. I guess the problem is that most average players won't be getting all three bonuses, each at max value, for every heist they do. And when you take that into account, individually these are just small boosts, and unlikely to make a very huge impact in one's overall leveling. So for anyone hoping that the game finally moved away from the challenge system, unfortunately this isn't it. For anyone else that was okay with or willing to put up with the challenges as it is, then it's a pretty good addition to the game since you're only getting more EXP on top of what we had before. But if you were to ask me, I still would have preferred it to be the other way around. That is, the main source of leveling being playing the game, with completions and stealth bonuses and a proper scaling for bags giving more EXP, while the challenges being the small supplemental EXP. Anyway, that's my take on the new leveling changes. I hope we get some more soon because I think this is a good first step, but it's not done yet. And this first step also took about two and a half months to get to this point, so... Well, I guess we'll see.